This is the best way you guys can score under a minute in Battle for the Time. Let's talk about it. Make sure you guys support on the Netmarble website. Let's hit top 20 in the next week. What's good, YouTube? No good, man. Come with you today with the Battle for the Time Hobgoblin Leader Speed Run Guide. So that was a long title, but I'm going to teach you guys basically how to get under a minute in Battle for the Time. We recently just did this here. As you can see, our phase one, two, and three looks like this. So if you rock the boy, be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe, turn on post notifications, all that good stuff. But let's get straight into this. I'm honestly not going to waste a lot of time. So let's talk about what you need now, guys. I've seen a lot of methods all around, all around, all around, right? All lovely methods. But my personal meta from what I have on my pay to win account is the plum and westwind method. Now, this method is very tedious. It's very daunting and can be very, very draining. But something to note. With Battle for the Time, guys, this is a speed run challenge. So there is not going to be a one and done try, right? So you're not just aiming. You're not just, you know, doing it one time and getting the best score possible, right? It's not power of destruction. It's Battle for the Time. So you're going to retry over and over and over, even if you don't have crit um, RNG, such as the West Wind, whatever other weapons use crit often. So that's just something to note with Battle for the Time. Now, I'm saying that because it took me a few retries. I've been literally doing this for the past hour to 30 minutes before I made the video so I could actually finally get the perfect run under a minute. As you can see, 58 seconds. Now, let's talk about what I use. As I said, Plum A5, Westwind A10, A5 works on the Westwind as well. We're using Dong Suck, we're using Kim, and we're using Lim Tay. Again, the only thing that matters with Battle for the Time is going to be your advancements, guys. So the higher advance you have your SRs and your SSRs is going to matter greatly, right? The thing that doesn't matter is artifacts. So as you can see here, I do have plus 20 everything when it comes to my crit set and Viri set. But for Sunji Nu, for your hunters, it really doesn't matter, guys. I could go in there with a blank, unleveled artifact set and get the exact same score even better. So... We're rocking full toughness set, full V reset for Sunjin, for Dawn Suck and Lim Tay. We're both rocking solid analysis. And on the right side, it really doesn't matter for those two. Now for Kim, we're rocking full burning blessing, which that definitely matters because we're going to get that enhanced blessing eight set effect. So that's going to be lovely. That's going to be very, very nice right there for the shadows. You guys can put Egress first. I found it that I wanted to get a little bit more damage to get that run even shorter, even shorter, even shorter. So Blades definitely helps out here. As you can see here, my yesterday score was a minute 26. We've shaved almost 30 seconds off that. And we were using Blades yesterday, but it ended up working a little bit more in our favor today. Now, as far as skills goes, we are rocking Vertical Arts and Armor Break the Wind variant. So that's Vacuum Wave. We have this one on Heroic and we have this one also on Heroic. Again, what matters is your advancements. I guess for runes, this can technically count as advancements because the higher uh, rune you may have, the more damage you'll do, the more you know stat increase you'll have. So having this on Heroic or Legendary will set you apart from the rest. So I've shown you guys pretty much everything. Last but not least, we got the Blessing Stones. We're bringing Bloodlust, Pulverize, Double-Edged Sword, and Mana Rampage. These are all very, very essential. I found this to be my best, best combo as far as going into this, and you're about to see why. All right, guys, so I'm going to talk over basically what the best thing is to do when it comes to Battlefoot of Time, and I have a nice little pre-recorded video. As you can see here, the phase one didn't work out here, so I'm going to go ahead and restart because with the vertical arts, you want to get a 10 out of 10 on all of the phase one bosses. Now. I'm coming in, I'm shifting immediately, 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 various times to around this spot. I think this specific spot where the slab is, is a great, great, great key that you guys can read on and go ahead and get to this exact spot. You want to face west from where you guys spawned in and use vertical arts in that specific direction. That should take care of each and every one of these mobs and you should get a 10 out of 10. So boom, then boom. So we got 10 out of 10. As you can see, the burn might take care of some of the bosses. So if they don't immediately die and get you into phase two, you might want to wait a second or two because I definitely lost some seconds on a run by doing that myself. 
um the bosses spawn in the phase two bosses spawn in and we're getting the west wind already ready so i shifted i used amplifying draw which you get from plum at at least advancement three so if you have plum advancement three and west wind advancement five you will be so so good here for this strat we're going ahead we're letting it rip unfortunately we only got one of the goblins and we didn't even crit so we gotta wait eight more seconds on this west wind skill so now i gotta improvise right so now i'm using full bloom thankfully though the second hob goblin jumped into the full bloom fray so now i'm doing damage to both of them which is lovely 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 now here i'm just marauding them with various types of attacks because i'm trying to get to the next phase as fast as possible right i'll be honest for 58 seconds i had a terrible phase two i have done phase twos in about 14 and 15 seconds i've seen some runs people are doing maybe 10 seconds they're one shotting with the westman on both bosses so you guys definitely have a way way better method out there especially with phase two but this is what worked for me you guys have some leeway with phase two but definitely get it done as fast as you can so we're rolling it back up with the west one and thankfully we get just about both of them i had to finish them off with vertical arts there so again we're losing a lot of time if i one shot with west one i probably could have shaved off maybe a half a second but we're coming in and we're spamming different types of basic attacks so we can build up some more mana as you can see i summon limte immediately please 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 do that guys that way your hunter support skills will reset even faster and i will be honest this is the best this is the best 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 way you can catch the hobgoblin in is his charge move right because this is very easy to shadow step and as soon as you guys get that shadow step or extreme evasion ready do not do anything yet wait till he's about to stop so he gets to the end and then you can shadow step summon your shadows summon your supports i'm summoning dong suck i'm doing vertical arts and then while kim is my final breaker while he gets summoned i'm going to full bloom so I'm going to full bloom, get amplifying draw active, get all types of things active, and then I'm using the West Wind. And as you can see, boom, we crit with the West Wind, and that's lovely. So we're reusing the West Wind skill one more time. We're getting amplifying draw, so we shift before we use the West Wind one more time. And we get him down to 10%. So that is amazing. 10% dude we got 51 seconds to go on a botched phase two for sure we have relatively no mana so we're just gonna spam skills here we get vertical arts ready we go ahead and use that I'm literally doing everything I can we get the plum skill ready and active we're using full bloom with Lim Tay, and we get 58.005 seconds on the clock guys this was insane this was amazing right so like I said the preface of battle for the time you guys will be rerunning a lot a lot a lot of the time and that's okay right because they want you guys to set the best score possible now do i think the crit rng could do some fixing for sure a thousand percent at the end of the day i think number will just wants us to put our best strat forward and see what the result is but with that run in mind what do you guys think let me know your thoughts below on reddit be sure to leave a like on the video subscribe turn on post notifications all that good stuff and i'll see you guys in the next one peace